Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at how to split an integer into a list of digits. So we'll take a look at three different cases. The first case is going to be the easiest. That is when we're splitting an integer into digits where the integer is positive. So that means any integer that is one or above. And then the second case we'll look at, this is a little bit harder but still pretty easy. This one will be when we include zero, so any non-negative integer. And finally we'll look at if we have any number in general, so like any positive or negative integer or zero. So let's say we have some number. Let's say we have one, two, three, four, five. All right, so we want to put this into a list. One, two, three, four, five. So in order to do this, we need to be able to access each of these digits individually. So the best way to do this is through modular arithmetic. Basically, we keep doing the following. We're going to take our number, so we'll start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we'll just take mod 10. That basically means when we take the division of our number by 10, we're going to end up with some remainder, and that remainder is actually going to be the last digit of our number. So if I divide 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 by 10, I'm going to end up with 1, 2, 3, 4 with a remainder of 5. So this five is actually going to be the digit that we keep. And this is that last digit. And we can see this works in any case. Like if I have, let's say six, eight, seven, three, and I take this mod 10, well, that is going to be equal to three. And the reason for that is because when we take 6,873 divided by 10, we're going to get 687 with a remainder of three. So it's this remainder that we want. And it even works if we have zero. Let's say I take 20, mod 10. Well, that's going to be equal to zero. And that's going to be the last digit. And the reason for that is because 10 evenly divides 20. All right, so let's go back to our original example here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and we mod 10, and that's going to be equal to five. Now, once we have that, we need to be able to get the next available digit. And the next available digit is this four. So somehow we need to get rid of this five. Well, the easiest way to do that is to subtract five from this and then divide by 10. Or in other words, just take one, two, three, four, five, and divide this by 10, we'll get one, two, three, four, point five, and then just take the floor of that, which basically means chop off anything after the decimal point. So that becomes one, two, three, four. Now we have one, two, three, four. Let's do the same thing. Mod 10 is equal to four. And now we take one, two, three, four, divided by 10, and we get 123.4, Truncate anything after the decimal point, and we get 1, 2, 3. And we can do that again. 123 mod 10 is equal to 3. And then we divide that out. 1, 2, 3 divided by 10 is equal to 12.3. But then we can get rid of the digits after the decimal point, and we get 12. Then we do 12 mod 10 is equal to 2. And 12 divided by 10 is equal to 1.2, make that 1. And finally, we have 1 mod 10. Well, 1 mod 10 is going to be equal to 0. Because when we divide 1 divided by 10, we get pretty much 0 with the remainder of 1. And then we can say 1 divided by 10 is equal to 0 0.1, which we can just round down to 0. And that's when we know to end, because at this point, we have 0. And when we have 0, there's no more digits. So essentially what we did here is we kept looping until our number was equal to zero. So we started off with one, two, three, four, five, and we ended with zero. And we captured each of these digits. So each of these digits that we've captured here, and I just realized I wrote a zero here when there should be a one, but each of these digits that we've captured here are going to be the digits in our list. So we'll have five, four, three, two, one, in that order. So this will be our list. And then we can just reverse this. So this will then be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So pretty much the intuition behind this is that we're going to keep modding by 10 and then dividing out by 10 and taking the floor of it. And that'll just keep going until we reach 0. So this works for positive integers. And we'll see after we code this out how we can adjust this to work for 0 and then negative integers as well. So let's start. We'll call our function split digits positive. So def split digits positive. And we'll take a parameter num. 
Now we have to create a digits list. So digits is equal to some empty list. And like we saw here, we can say while num is greater than zero. Well, we have to add our digit to digits. So we'll say digits dot append. And remember to get the digit, we can say num mod 10. And that'll again take the remainder when we divide num by 10. And once we do that, we need to adjust num so that we can then get the next digit and the next and the next until we get zero. So we say num double divide equals 10. And this double division is just floor division. So it works the same way that we were seeing before here. And then finally, once we have this, we can just return digits, but then we want to reverse this because remember we started off with one, two, three, four, five, and this is going to get us five, four, three, two, one. But in order to reverse this, we can just say return digits and then put a bracket here and we'll just use string splicing. So do that and then negative one. And that reverses our list. So this code is going to work for when we want to split a positive integer into digits. So let's actually test this out. So let's say I want to print split digits positive, And let's say one, two, three, four, five. All right, so we'll run this. And we can see here that we get a list one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like that worked. Let's try another example. Print split digits positive. Let's say four, twenty, three, two, three, zero. And we should see that this also still works we still get our digits in the correct order. Now let's try something else. Let's try print split digits positive zero. So what's going to happen here, and we can see here is that we're going to end up with an empty list. And the reason for this is because if we go back to line three, we can see that we're only looping while num is greater than zero. Well, what if num starts off at zero? If that's the case, zero is not greater than zero. So this loop will never execute, which means that digits is going to be an empty list. And of course, if we reverse an empty list, it's still an empty list. So we end up with this. And that's not what we want. So let's create a new function that's going to adjust for this. So I'll copy this over. Let's copy this down here. But this time, let's call this split digits non-negative. Non-negative meaning that includes zero and any positive integers. Now, the only change we have to make here is we want to check if our number is zero. Because if that's the case, all we have to do is return a list that contains zero. So if num is equal to zero, just return that. And that's an easy edge case. So now let's run this. We'll change positive to non-negative, just to show that it still works. And we'll copy this over for the rest of these. Now we can run this and we see that all of these still work. So the positive integers still work and zero now works as well. All right. Now we reach the final stage. What if we want to also split a negative integer into its digits? So let's say I have something like negative one, three, eight, four. Well, I want to turn this into negative one, three, eight, four. In order to do this, we can actually use a combination of absolute values and booleans. So let's copy over this function that we've written here. We'll move it down here. And instead of non-negative, let's say split digits any. This will indicate that we can split any digit. So we'll keep whatever we have here. But now let's add a Boolean. Is neg is equal to num is less than zero. So this Boolean is going to keep track of whether our number is negative. And the reason for that is because we can see here that if we try to run this as it is, our number, if it's negative, is never going to have this loop run. It's always going to be an empty list. So we check if it's negative and we keep track of that. And now we can make the num absolute value. So num is equal to absolute value of num. So where before we had a number like negative one, three, eight, four. Now we have one, three, eight, four. And we can do the same thing we did before and just convert this into a list of digits where we have one, three, eight, and four. And that's what this is going to accomplish. Now that we have that, the very last thing to do is to check if is neg. And if we have a negative number, we want to change that first digit into a negative number. So this one should be turned into a negative one. So right now, we're going to end up with four, eight, three, one. This is before I return uh, the reverse of this. So right now, as of this point, or as of this point, we have the list four, eight, three, one. Well, I want to make this into negative. So to access this last item, I can actually use negative indexing. So if is neg, I can say digits 
at the very last item is at index negative one. Or you could alternatively say length of digits minus one. But I'm going to say minus one just to keep it short. So if digits at the index negative one is here, then we can say times equals negative one. And that's pretty much all we have to do. So that's going to account for this case. And finally, when we reverse this, it's going to turn into negative one, three, eight, four. So this code should work. Let's try a few cases. So let's say print split digits any, and let's say negative five zero zero nine six seven. And let's also try that case we were talking about. So print split digits any, and we'll try negative one three eight four. And let's also try this function on the other ones we've written just to make sure that they still work. So we run that and we can see that all of these now work. So we get the negative digits correctly as we were expecting here. And we still have our zero case that works and our positive integers also still worked. Now, if you see here before, when we had split digits non-negative, if I ran this with what we had before, so split digits non-negative, we could see that this is going to return an empty list, just like we said before, because our program can't actually account for negative numbers, which is why we had to take the absolute value and convert it to positive in order for our program to work. Now, we could have just easily not done this and just said while the num is less than zero, but then what would happen is on line 23, we'd eventually end up with taking some number, Florida by 10, which is negative, which is then going to be negative one. It's always going to be negative one. And so we'll never actually reach zero, which is an issue. So that's why this technique works. So we can see here, we'll run it. And as we saw before, we get the correct answer. So that's it for this video, and I hope this was helpful.